Welcome to this video tutorial on graphs of polynomial functions. We're going to look at three examples. The first two are just quickly sketching a graph. The third is trying to come up with the equation of the graph. So first, we're going to try to sketch the graph indicated above. We'll put axes on our paper, put the x-axis, put the y-axis, and the first thing we need to do is figure out the zeros or the x-intercepts. To do that, we look at each factor and determine the value of x that would make that particular factor equal to zero. And then we'll come over to our graph and we'll put those zeros on our picture. For the purposes of our class for Algebra 2, we don't have to have this drawn perfectly to scale. The other thing that we have to determine is the end behavior. So we think about foiling out this whole expression and seeing what the largest degree term would be equal to. So x, and then two more x's would be x cubed, and then three more x's would be x to the sixth, plus we have that negative three out to the front. So when we go to look at the end behavior, we have negative three x to the sixth. Even exponent means that it will be going in the same direction. Negative out front means that it's going to be going down to both the left and the right. When we go to draw this graph, we have to be mindful of exponents. So at negative 4, it's going to act like x squared. It's going to bounce off and look like a u. At 7, it's going to look like a cube, which means it's going to flatten out but continue as usual. So when we draw this, it comes up, it bounces off, it continues, it goes through the 2. As it comes down to 7, it's going to taper off for a second, and then it's going to continue. And we'll continue down like this, and we'll draw the arrow in. Notice how it flattens out there. Notice how it bounces off the negative 4. And also notice how the graph draws itself. Let's look at a second example. Oh, gee. Here's our second example. When we look at it, watch out there are three factors. Here it's going to be a negative 5 that gets us a 0. We'll put that negative 5 over here. This will be a positive 1, but there's one other factor. It's the x, and that corresponds with the origin, or just x equals 0. End behavior. We've got 1x, 2, 3, 4, 5. This will be an x to the fifth. With an odd and behavior, they go in opposite directions. Since this is a positive coefficient, it will be down to the left and up to the right. Exponents. Well, notice that we've got an exponent of 2, and we also have another exponent of 2. So it's going to bounce off at each of those locations. We'll sketch the graph, kind of come up here. It bounces off. It cuts through the origin, and it bounces off at x equals 1, and it goes up forever and ever and ever and ever, and there we go. We could really get rid of this other portion, and if your graph looks weird with your end behavior drawn in, you can get rid of it. There's our graph, and that's how it would look. Make sure that you label the axes, please. You've got the x-axis, and you've got the y-axis. One more problem. Given a graph, can we determine its equation? Well, notice we've got the zeros right here, and one of them's going to need an exponent, because at 5, it tapers off. So this graph is supposed to be named h of x. We'll name the equation h of x as well. It's going to have an x minus 5 factor because of this spot, and it's going to be cubed because it bounces off and kind of flattens out as it cuts through. Then, at x equals 9, it just cuts through like a line, so it's going to be a normal factor. We still need to determine what coefficient goes out front, and we're going to call that a c. In order to determine the coefficient, we'll plug in the point that we know. So our y value is 8, that would replace h of x. And we're plugging in 7 in place of x throughout the rest of the equation. So here we're going to get that 8 is equal to a negative 16 times c, and when we divide by 16, 
C is going to be a negative 1 half. So the factored form for the equation of this graph will be that h of x is equal to a negative 1 half times the quantity x minus 5 squared times the quantity x minus 9. That is the factored form, and that's one part of what we want to do. We also need the standard form. To get that, we will FOIL out the x minus 5 squared. Now, if you need to show more work to FOIL it out, that's fine. But with all the factoring we've done, hopefully you're able to FOIL it out kind of quickly. Then we're going to leave that negative 1 half out front, and we're going to multiply those two x, uh, parentheses together. I'm going to take the x to everything in the first set of parentheses. So x times x squared will be x cubed. Then we'll get minus 10x squared plus 25x. And then we will run through with the negative 9 to everything. Watch how we line this up. So we're going to have a negative 9x squared. Keep it aligned. A positive 90x. And then over here, it looks like a negative 225. Combine our like terms. So we're going to have x cubed minus 19x squared plus 115x minus 225. We're not quite done because we need to take that negative 1 half and distribute it to all of those items. So it'll be a negative 1 half x cubed plus 19 halves x squared. Leave it as an improper fraction. Minus 115 halves x plus 225 halves. Please call it h of x. Use that same name, and that would be the standard form. The last thing we did with these problems in class was we noted their domain and their range. In this problem, the domain, which are the x values, would be everything. It goes all the way to the left, which is negative infinity, and it goes all the way to the right, which is positive infinity. Its range, notice it goes all the way down. So the smallest the y values get is negative infinity. The tallest they get is up here at a y value of 8. And with the range, we put the rectangular parenthesis to denote that it actually gets up to the 8. Those would be our domain and range. The equations are highlighted in yellow. And that's how we would take a graph of a polynomial and write its equation.